So I'm going to do a tutorial video here for Out of the Park 21 on how you might trade for a superstar player if that's what you wanted to do. Um, I have a video about how to trade for prospects and another one about, uh, what is it? Oh, how to tra trade away a bad contract. Um, so, but I haven't done one on how you would trade for a superstar player. Some of the principles and I guess logistics behind it are relatively similar, but wanted to do one on this. And I do want to say, you know, right off the bat here that I have my trade setting start set to heavily favors prospects and extremely difficult. So the trade settings are at the hardest level. So you might get different results in your sim than I get here. And also you're just in a completely different universe because I'm in 2026 here. So I'm pretty far along. So you might, you, what I'm saying is you might not be able to replicate exactly what I'm doing here, but the basic kind of steps that you can take to see if a team will realistically trade you a superstar, you can apply to your sim. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go to the transactions. And while I'm doing this, by the way, if you're watching and you've watched other videos, curious if the sound is any better. I had uh, multiple comments recently that the sound was just too low. So, uh, and I'm still just using my laptop laptop mic. Uh, didn't bother getting out my mic I use for music stuff. But I just adjust, adjusted some internal settings that I didn't realize had been turned down on my laptop so that were causing it to be a bit quieter. So let me know if this is running any any better in the comments if you're watching, if, if this volume sounds okay. So we're going to go to the trade here. And just for fun, we're going to trade try to trade for Fernando Tatis Jr. So I'm going to drag him up here, right? And then keep in mind, the Padres are over budget here by 1.24 million. So that might play into their decision to trade or not trade. But Tatis here, you know, my scout still thinks he's an 80. OSA thinks he's a 75. He's a superstar player. He's, you know, put up 4.9, 9.3, 5.9, 6.6 war. Ridiculous OPS pluses. This guy's a superstar. So... Contract wise, what he has going on is uh, he's got three years left, including this season in 2026, at $27.2 million, and he's 27 years old. So, pretty, uh, pretty good asset to acquire. You know, an all star elite level player who's 27 and under con team control for three more seasons. That's, that's pretty nice. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I, I drag Tatis in and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my best trade asset in the trade and see what they say. And that's Livian Delgado, who is a just a guy who's a young pitcher, 24, who's my scout thinks could be one of the best players in the league. And this is his first full year in the majors for me. And he's looking like he might be able to make good on that promise. Very, and every team wants this guy. <laughs> so, and I'm not putting Delgado in because I'm willing to trade Delgado. I'm not. I'm doing this first to say like, hey, are you even willing to consider Tatis if I offer up my best guy? Like, is that even something that will tempt you? Because if they're like, no way, will I even consider this? And it's like, cool, I'm moving on. <laughs> if, if you value Tatis to the point where you won't even consider a trade for my best player, generally time to move on. Not, not always, you know, that's probably a little bit too uh, much of a blanket statement. But this will just gauge their overall level. And they, they'll do this. They'll give me Tatis for Delgado. Some of that probably has to do with the fact that their budget would improve by $17 million because Delgado is making like $1.2 million per year. And now this is kind of how you're going to figure out, can you put a package together, right, that they'll, that they'll take? Because like I said, I don't want to trade Delgado. I'm just using this to gauge their interest. So to maybe get names that they're, or players on my team that they're interested in and that I'm actually willing to trade, I'm going to ask them to retain some salary. Now, I'm not actually expecting them to retain salary once I go through with the trade. I'm using this as a tool to figure out players that they would acquire or, you know, desire from my team. So I'm going to bump it up. They're still willing to 5, 10. They're still willing to do it. 15, they're willing to 15%. 20% they say, I'm going to have to think about it. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to hit the make this work now button. I'm going to say, cool, tell me some guys that you're interested in in my organization. And it's a pretty long list. You know, this is this is a lot of guys. And I'm just going to be picking some random guys. I'm not necessarily saying this is an exact trade you should do, right? You're going to have to decide who are the players you're willing to trade. I'm just doing this to show you how you go about building a package and figuring out the guys that the computer team 
is interested in. So now let's just say I'm willing to put in, uh, who knows, this guy, Sacco Voot. This is a guy who is only a 40 rated potential overall, but if you look at, oops, that's the wrong tab, scouting, you know, a year ago in March of 25, and I'm now in May of 26, my scout thought he was a 70 potential player and he's dropped all the way to 40. So my scout might a big time miss on him. Maybe the Padres still think he's a potential star, but this guy is kind of bombed out as he's made it out of my international complex into rookie ball, but the Padres still like him. So cool. All right, we've got that guy in here, right? And now we're going to bump it up 25. Not a fair deal. So, okay, well, who's somebody who we can do now that will make you like this deal, San Diego? And so let's just go ahead and put in, uh, you know, I don't know, just, a, you know, Keller. Mitch Keller, who's like my number four starter, probably a really good number three starter on most teams, and they're willing to do that. So as you can see here, I'm building up some players that they're gonna like, and eventually I'm gonna take Delgado out of this package and see what they say. So I'm gonna keep bumping this up. So I'm up to 35 and make this work again. You know, just kind of going going through this process still. And let's add in, uh, let's see, just, you know, where was he? Oh, I lost the guy, oh, Sanchez. Sanchez, he's like the number 30 prospect in baseball. He's an 18-year-old center fielder with a huge future. But if you're looking to acquire a superstar, you're probably going to give, have to give up one, maybe two top 100 prospects if you have them uh, as part of the package. That's realistic to expect. Uh, so now let's keep let's keep adding some. So 45%. And remember, you can only put five players in the trade. So this will be the last guy we can put in before we take Delgado out. Well, and now to get to 45%, they've narrowed their list down a lot. <laughs> this is their... Their top six guys in my organization that you like. So I'm going to add one of them. Let's add Brady Core again. And now what I'm going to do to see if a deal is even possible without Delgado, I'm going to say, hey, don't retain any salary. You're going to take that back down to zero and remove Delgado. So what he says is, I can't accept this. Can't quite accept it right now, but if you submit it, he'll think about it. So we built a four-player package here for one of the best players in the league that he's going to think about. So you can, again, go to make this work now. And let's see, you know, so if I put, you know, there's Delgado, but I don't have to include Delgado, who's the best player in my organization probably, right? Or, you know, right, most valuable trade piece because he's, he's under team control for like seven more seasons. He's cheap and he's a budding superstar. So I can just add in any of these guys, right? And, you know, who knows? Let's let's just add in Nick Maton, my third baseman. So then you can see, is there any other wiggle room? Like, okay, so he, he says this package works. I've got my five guys here. Will you retain any salary? Oh, 5%, yes. 10? So he's willing to retain 10% of salary. Okay, cool. Another thing you can do is you can take this down to zero. And maybe one of these guys you really don't want to deal, right? Like, ooh, you know, it was, I'm trying to win right now. I don't want to trade a dude out of my starting rotation. Maybe that's what you're thinking, right? Or maybe you want to take out Franklin Sanchez because you don't want to put in a top 100 prospect. But this is way, you know, if you've added uh, a piece that maybe you'd rather hold on to, say, all right, what if I take Mitch Keller out of this deal? How do you like it? You don't like it too much. Okay, well, are there other pieces that I like? Uh, that I prefer to put in over Mitch Keller. And so you can see here, I've got a, a bunch of guys now that I can pick from. So if I don't want to put in Keller, I can now consider putting in any of these other guys who are all really good players, but maybe for one reason or another, you know, the depth in my organization, depth on my major league team, I'm willing, more willing to trade, say, a center fielder, right? Or more willing to trade maybe a closer, a bullpen piece than a starter. Um, you know, you can just kind of say, cool, I, yeah, I'll trade you my best bullpen piece because relievers are a lot more replaceable than starters. So... That's how, you know, now I could trade for one of the best players in the game under team control for three years. And here's how I got to that five player package. And while I'm, you know, I'm giving up, I, I don't want to get into too much of would this, you know, would I do this trade? Would it be worth it or not? Just because that's not the point of this exercise. The point of the exercise is just to see, like, how do I decide how to build a package for this guy? But, you know, as a side note, this, you know, this is a trade that I would definitely consider doing in certain situations. I don't need a shortstop, so I don't need to make the trade for Tatis, but it would never hurt to get one of the best players in baseball. Um, and I also, I don't do too many trades like this in the game. I, I do make big trades, but I don't really make huge blockbusters. 
I guess, too often, uh, you know, maybe one per season at the most, if I'm, you know, a deadline deal or something, just because I think out of the park, like, like any game, if you play any game long enough, you're going to find out ways to beat it, to not cheat it, but to kind of work the system. And, and I think the trade engine using the way that I just went through it, you can kind of build a team that's just, uh, absurdly good <laughs> and it's not necessarily realistic if you wanted to sit here and, and do 15 trades like this right you could make an amazing roster i try to keep it a little more realistic so i don't trade as often as maybe i would if i were to take the governors off you know and just kind of go all out and make every trade i could and make the best team possible i prefer to add in a sense of realism and not make trades like this too often just because i do think that you can kind of take advantage of the game if you've played it for years and learn enough. So anyways, any questions about all that, you know, just leave it, leave it in the comments here, but also, yeah, let me know if the sounds any better on this video. Hopefully it's not too loud. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's how to trade for a superstar player in out of the park 21.